Good afternoon. How many of you here do testing as your main job, whether it's uh, testing the OpenStack services or tenant applications running on OpenStack? How many of you are testers? A handful here. OK. For you know, those of you who are, you know, don't have any experience in testing in OpenStack Cloud, the question could be, hey, OpenStack provides Tempest for all the APIs. And the Horizon team provides some Selenium tests for testing the GUI. So what's still there? And what's the big deal here, right? Uh, so I just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the complexity that we are facing in this large, complex uh, AT&T integrated cloud application that we have, why it's complex, and how we are handling it. Uh, you know, th those of you who have been here for the keynote last year, this year, know that uh, at and is making a lot of rapid progress in virtualizing almost all of the services it provides, whether it's uh, business ethernet, cellular data, or as we heard this morning, entertainment. All those services are getting virtualized, and those require multiple VNFs. These VNFs have their own orchestration needs, performance needs. Some of them need DPDK, SRIOV, what have you, right? So testing those VNFs, ensuring they work well in your cloud environment is one requirement. And then we have eComp, which is all your orchestration management uh, part, which has now become an open source product called ONAP. And then you know, we push the envelope when it comes to infrastructure, because uh, you, know, you all probably heard about this phrase, uh, carrier grade, which essentially is held synonymous with you can't fail, and you need to provide highest levels of performance, right? And you need to do that in a, a rapidly evolving technology open stack, right? So that's the core of this thing. That is, a, testing is the real requirement behind being able to handle so much of different technologies that are so rapidly changing, while at the same time being able to provide the carrier grade kind of uh, expectation that the clients have of your environment. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand over to Venkat to talk about some of these things in detail, go into the next level of depth about uh, how much of testing we do at each of those layers, how did we automate some of those things, and other details. Hello, guys. See, primary, uh, our primary focus is not doing a manual testing, but we automate from the upfront, like, you know, what we cover on a day-to-day -day basis because we have we have to cover a wide range of sites like um, we we are we already have a more than uh, 100 sites uh, which are productionized so what we do in these sites uh, like you know we cover uh, open stack apis uh, non open stack same time cli gui and non gui uh, and non open stack gui see if you really look into our test case scenarios like you know uh, Pretty much most of them are automated, uh, but we do cover, uh, there are quite a few cases where we do a manual testing, where which we cannot automate, like whether it may be a disruptive test cases, uh, like, you know, and there are also at and specific uh, post-processing where ATO managed test cases, those are not fully automated. But pretty much most of them are automated and we can hit on any site and get the metrics uh, immediately as we run and see what is working and what's not. So for those of you who cannot do speed math, uh, the total number of tests for a release of cloud is about 4,000, out of which uh, about 40% is uh, open stack, the rest are others. This is what I was talking about, about how it's all not just open stack, it's the rest of the stuff that you need to validate too before you can say your cloud is fully functional, right? And the, and the key challenges which we are seeing is uh, primarily with uh, the performance enablers, like whether it's the DPDK or SRIOV, uh, like, you know, uh, and also the migration of the cold and the hot migrations. Like, how do we automate those test cases? Like, do we really need to? Because it also involves the disruption. Uh, so, you know, whenever it comes to the disruption, we just keep out of the automation. Uh, wherever we can uh, automate, then, you know, uh, as part of an API, we do cover those. And if, as you have seen in the first slide, we cover, we have a wide range of VNFs. Uh, like, you know, each VNF has their own requirements, uh, whether it may be a compute requirements, network requirements, 
or you know underlying the uh, fabric requirements so from an orchestration perspective uh, like you know we do cover up to certain extent of vnf automation like you know how we can automate uh, what all the core necessities of a vnf uh, uh, and apart from that like you know how do we measure the performance of the vnf right you know what are the performance requirements for a vnf like each vnf has its own bandwidth requirements what is the latency or it's an io requirements we do use a quite a few open source tools uh, for measuring the performance uh, uh, you know especially we do have a quite a few challenges uh, when it comes to the performance enablers like you know uh, especially doing a performance tuning whether it's an mtu sizes or uh, with the dpdk like you know what is the ideal parameters which our uh, vnf can uh, perform like you know properly what their requirements can be met Yeah, so I'll hand over to Bavin. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us today. Uh, this slide kind of talks about, reiterates what uh, Venkat and Srini just talked about, how testing is so important across all the different layers. And what you see here is, is more on the framework side and how we accomplish this. Uh, <clears throat> we, we've come a long way at at and We started using SOAP UI, then we moved down to Tempest, and then um, CLIs we had deprecated, we had to come up with a new solution, new framework for that. And so what you're seeing here, the top three um, are basically um, APIs that we, we test and we're using the Tempest uh, framework. We utilize the talks eSmoke, eFull, and then anything that's non-open stack like uh, Contrail or any other application, basically we, we create plugins for them. So that's the number four, that, that's number three that you're seeing, which is also within the Tempest framework. And then the fourth one is the need to do um, a lot of audit and configuration type of testing. So in order to accomplish that, we built a framework around Test Infra, which is an extension of PyTest. And uh, all our CLI tests are basically done using Test Infra. And then the last one that you see there is all GUI testing, which is for OpenStack uh, Horizon dashboard, and also non-OpenStack uh, components. And <clears throat> this slide here kind of talks a little bit about how we accomplish this. Um, you know, the, the need for the testing sooner uh, with more automation. We basically shift left uh, and then try to develop our scripts uh, in parallel with the dev teams. So this kind of is more on the operational side, how we, how we accomplish this. <clears throat> you can see that uh, as the dev teams are developing, uh, once the high level designs are done, the automation team starts building the building blocks. And uh, we kind of come together towards the end here <clears throat> where we start deploying and testing using continuous integration. Uh, future path for us is to be able to containerize all our tests and deploy them to uh, local control planes and uh, execute testing from there. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass on to Srini. Do you want to talk a little bit about the LCOO? You know, LCOO is, how many of you here have heard about LCOO? A few here, right? Uh, so this is kind of within the OpenStack community tends to be the voice of the users, particularly those users who have Know, requirement for deploying OpenStack at a large scale, uh, the issues they face, and that being conveyed back to the individual development teams. So there is some information here about how you will be able to access it. There is, in fact, something that you can scan and uh, uh, get in touch with LCOO to know about what are the, for, for example, in testing, one of the areas they are concerned about is uh, destructive testing, how it needs to be carried out. So if there are issues that you would want them to or you know, want to find out if that's faced by other large companies who are deploying OpenStack, what their solutions are. Uh, that's a good organization for you to get engaged with, discuss uh, your requirements, or share your solutions with other similar organizations. We have probably have a few minutes for questions. Two minutes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, we 
this is all not done within AT&T, right? This is, this is none, none of this is done anywhere outside of AT&T. This is for AT&T done within the AT&T dev test production environments. Any other questions from anybody? Thanks, everybody.